Hill. I am a president, or I guess we call me a, a visionary now, at Ace Glass Construction in Arkansas. Also, uh, partners or owner in another business, uh, Centerline Systems, which fabricates uh, ACM panel and prefabricates curtain wall unitized, uh, all that for uh, Ace and for some other companies, and then started uh, what is now Ace Glass Recycling in Arkansas, uh, working on improving collection of container glass and working towards architectural glass in Arkansas. So uh, past attorney, or I guess recovering attorney, um, I practiced law for a number of years and uh, so still keep my license up, but I uh, typically just use it to help friends and family now, so I don't, don't really do the true practice of law anymore. We do a variety of things. We really got out of the smaller work. We do a little bit of service work for some of our best clients. Uh, like I said, we do uh, friends and family and good customers. We'll do small work for them, but primarily uh, contract we like is gonna be north of um, half a million dollars. Uh, and we've done as big as 10 million. Uh, there's just not a lot of big contracts that size in Arkansas. So uh, we try to do what we can, but we've got, you know, uh, there's some competition out there and there's just only so much that goes around. Uh, hopefully it'll be better in the future, but right now uh, Arkansas is kind of a hole in the center of the U.S. Uh, and we're okay with that. I love glass build because I come and I see people that I don't get to see very often. Uh, I get to put uh, a face on some vendors uh, that come through and see my team, but I travel so much and do things that I often don't get to see people. So everybody's here for a few days and it's great. I get to catch up with people on their families, what's going on in their business, and, uh, and then the education and opportunities that NGA provides are out of this world. Uh, the things that I saw yesterday uh, that probably were really blowing my mind. Uh, we spent an hour in kind of a round table uh, talking about uh, employees, how to recruit, retain, train, those things. I know Glazer Nation's uh, been kind of helping lead the way on that. Uh, what NGA has put together on our apprenticeship program and the materials that are available, um, I had been watching kind of from the sidelines and not doing enough with it, uh, but I, I can tell you I'll be going home and, and working with our team to start implementing that. Um, I saw heard some great ideas about you know, maybe you can't start a full apprenticeship program because you don't have, there's not enough glazers or enough demand in the market for glazers. Uh, but you could plug into, say, carpentry program and show bits and pieces and just get more uh, people to see what we do. Uh, in my mind, we do the prettiest, coolest parts of the building. When you see a building, uh, you know, I'm amazed at the engineering of the steel work and the concrete and interior finishes are cool, but without awesome glass, that building's nothing, and uh, and as they've, you know, the battle of the wall a few years ago was amazing to me. Everybody I know fights for that outside office to get that natural light, and to think we we're going to have these uh, little portals like a, you know, like a boat so we could insulate the building better. I get it. Uh, and I'm as sustainable as uh, probably more than anybody else. I got a, a recycling company. I've got a 100% uh, solar-powered uh, manufacturing plant. I drive a hybrid. Used to drive an electric car. I'm a vegetarian, I do all the crazy stuff, anything I can do to do my part to make it better. And I think glass is part of that message. So okay. it's really cool to see what's going on. You can take that out and call it sustainable, but ultimately uh, people are gonna be miserable in those buildings. And I don't care, you know, you can build, uh, you could work in a Yeti cooler, nobody wants to do it. It'd be tempered all day and it wouldn't cost you anything to heat and cool. That's great. Nobody wants to go sit there. If you want to run people uh, back home to work from home, build buildings like that. If you want to draw them back to work, you need to have good airflow, you need to have great natural light, you need to have spaces that people want to work in. When we did our uh, newest building five years ago, kind of went over the top on some of the design stuff, a lot of natural light, great spaces. I can tell you for a fact, uh, the energy, the productivity, and the profitability have gone up in that period. And I would give part of that to People like coming to work. They pull up to the office. It looks awesome. Their office has natural light. It's a pleasant place to work. We do the little stuff. I think that you know New York and California, they're on the right track trying to be sustainable. Uh, and But I think the glass, like you said, the glass industry has got to step up. we got to be more sustainable, using more recycled aluminum, more recycled glass, which honestly the float guys already do an awesome job. There's very little that goes, that leaves their uh, property um, except in, in good flat glass. Uh, we got to do a better job of selling that and reminding people what natural light does. I think our coatings are some of the best they've ever been. Uh, the thermal energy uh, imaging and things that I'm seeing on buildings is the best it's ever been. I mean, we've got the technology to do it. And really, if cities would adopt the codes uh, that we've put forward, I think we're on top of it. The, uh, the problem we have and what New York will see also 
is if you uh, if you outstrip, and this is Tom and Irma have taught me this, that we've got all the codes and all the technology to move as fast as anybody wants to move into sustainability and into uh, more energy efficiency. The problem is the cost of that technology. I mean, hell, they got cars that can fly, but nobody can afford one right now, and they don't have the laws ready for us to be doing that around town. Same thing. We've got the glass technology to meet all the codes. People can't afford it. We've got the technology to take windows out and put other stuff up. People can't afford that either. It's going to run off all their employees. So we need to be a bigger picture think, thinking uh, organization and industry and say we're a key part of people's health and happiness. You know, you start taking that away, there's other prices you'll pay. Kind of got off track on with sustainability and energy about the training stuff and, and what's going on out there and, and people adopting and really digging into uh, the apprentice program. We were talking today uh, that there is some, uh, some funding and foundation money and government money and some things I think we're going to have to train and, and we're going to have to kind of rethink our industry. Uh, the apprenticeship model works. Uh, it's been only half of our industry adopted that, and that's mostly the union uh, glazing shops. Our non-union shops have got to step up and figure out how to fund this training and do this because uh, we, we need to work together to get that thing done. That's a fight that we shouldn't be having on, uh, on the politics of how you run your company and how that goes. That should be an apolitical uh, issue for us as an, as an industry that we're all going to get together and fund better training and fund recruiting and uh, and get more uh, visibility because like i said we're the coolest thing on a building but most people don't know how to get in the glass business don't know anything about it don't know how awesome and complex and technological we are and don't know how many cool people work in this business because we're not very visible if you don't know somebody in the glass business you're probably not going to fall into it that's part of a bigger problem with uh, just our trade in uh, specifically. If you look at what the cost have grown uh, for electricians, plumbers, every other trade is, uh, has grown their, their pricing model over the years. We've done a, a fantastic but also bad job at keeping prices down. Our price per square foot has not grown uh, nearly as much as other trades has, so we don't have the kind of money. We're doing the same thing with training and marketing our industry. Most people you say, hey, would you like to tell uh, high school kids or college kids about what you do and reach out to them? I'd love to. What's it going to take? Well, I need you to get two of your superintendents or, or top guys that can actually talk and explain what we do to go spend a half a day at a school or, or go do a, a video or you know just the resources it takes to do that. The next thing we say is I'm too busy. I got too much going on or that's going to cost me money. And I think as a industry, we're going to have to get together and figure out how to fund that. And the, the, the progressive forward thinkers are going to be the first ones. But I think as, a, as an industry, we all have to chip in and get this done. We all need to be at home telling our family and friends how cool our work is. I mean, look at construction in general. The reason I, you know, these, we're having problems uh, with succession in companies is – Subcontractors uh, have generally, uh, you know, my parents said this is a tough business. We're the bottom of the, uh, we're the bottom of the food chain. You take what everybody gives you. It's hard. It's great work, but it's hard work. And never said, hey, we put the, we put the cool stuff on buildings. We need to be telling our kids and their friends and our business friends in town that we're doing okay uh, financially. That we we put up cool buildings and do that. That we've got great people to work for. A lot of the company owners are some of the best people I know in business, period, across any industry, not just the glass business. And so I think we've got to promote that more and say, we're doing a good job out here, and we're, we are a, uh, an interesting trade and business to be in, and that there's success out there for you uh, and the personal accomplishment, and there's lots of opportunities for every kind of personality style and, uh, and skill set that we've got something in our business that you can do. Using uh, the model with uh, Glazer Nation or Glazer Nation and Glazers on Demand, in the past, it's not finding the field help. Is there's there's great companies like Glazers on Demand and some others that do that for us. Guess what? You don't have a lead guy on site uh, that can help manage those crews. When well, we do a good job with that, so we've got to not just train for field. Uh, work. We also have to train leaders, and we got to identify people, and we have to incentivize. Right now, a lot of a lot of our best field workers don't want to be a lead guy. It's a different skill set, and it's a pain some days to do it. Managing people is hard, uh, but we got to train people that somebody has to step up and manage. Somebody has to step up and plan. 
you know, and, and if, if anything else, look at it as, as you're volunteering what you're doing for your team. If you've got that skill set, shame on you if you're not stepping up and doing it and doing the hard work, which is leading a crew uh, to glory and finishing a job. As far as sustainability, we were an early adopter and it for two reasons. One, it's the right thing to do. Uh, you know, I poo-pooed uh, global warming for a long time and said this is just cycles and things happen. There's hot decades, cold decades. Maybe there is some of that. Um, I think uh, you and I have talked about faith-based stuff. I think that we're stewards of the resources we have. So even if the world's going to turn back cool in a few years or do whatever it's going to do, we're su still supposed to do everything that we can do to manage resources. That includes the fossil fuels, the solar, the wind. It's all the stuff. You to know, recycle everything. You have an obligation, I think, to the universe, to our world, uh, to, to treat it right. And so that is sustainability. There's a huge focus on it now, which is great, but we should have been doing it anyways. On top of that, just like our business, uh, that efficiency turns into profits. Uh, our, our solar array paid for itself in less than two years. That's unusual. It usually takes five. But goodness gracious, 20% ROI on an investment in your company, that's fantastic. That's the kind of things that we have to look at the business case for doing the right thing. And, uh, you know, I read a quote in uh, Good to Great recently. Uh, somebody said, you know, I just want to be good. I want to be good at it and be successful and make some money. And they did some research and said it doesn't cost any extra. A matter of fact, it's cheaper and easier to be great, to do everything you can. It flips back around and becomes more profitability and a better, stronger business that goes forward. So I think our industry needs to lean in and choose to be great and go past just good, just making a buck, just getting by. Let's just go ahead and be great. It's cheaper. It makes more sense. We'll be more profitable. We can hire more good people and do more cool work. Why not be great? So uh, glass build is important to our industry. Uh, the biggest reason to me is we are social creatures. We are meant to see each other in person, talk, see facial expressions, body language. Somebody tell you on the phone all day long that they're doing great and you see them here and you can tell that there's something up. You can pull them off the side, have a conversation, do life with more people. We need events like this. We need all the collective energy of people getting together. I learned so much in three days here and then at BEC in the spring going and listening, not just from the, the stuff that NGA puts on and, and the amazing amount of information they give us, just my peers, things that they're doing, things they're seeing, what's going on with them. Sometimes it's, it's a success that I can copy. Sometimes it's a lesson that I don't want to learn personally and they'll share their lesson and I do the same. I'm, I'm probably better at teaching what not to do than what to do. Uh, but if somebody else, if I can save somebody else the pain and the money, it's worth it. But I won't see some of those people in an entire year except for here. So if I'm not here at Glass Build, I don't get that energy. I don't get those lessons. I don't get to share with other people and invest in our industry. So Glass Build is, is very important to us, uh, to me as a person, to my team, because of the things we get out of it. And then as an industry, I think we need the collective energy and we have to get together in person to get that done.